Welcome to Wolf Den's Dogs in the Den, your weekly insight into the fastest sport on four legs. We are back for another week. I'm here with my comrade, JC. We're back on the tools. Back on the tools. You look like you've just got out of the shed there. A bit of a funnel let on. Had your spanner and your hammer and whatnot. Uh, yeah, no, excited to, to be here once again, joined by your lovely self. And uh, obviously got to go back and look what happened last week. There's a superstar that was unearthed at Wentworth Park last Thursday night. A very good winner in group company down at Sandown. And obviously we've got a big week of racing ahead. Yeah, we do. Why don't we just have a quick look at the show rundown? You've basically said it all. Cranbourne Cup, we'll have a look at what happened there. The Wendy, Wendy record broken, 10-year-old record. Ipswich Cup's the next group one on the horizon, so we'll have a bit of a look at that. Bit of a look ahead to Victoria. With that out of the way, let's go to what we normally do, which is your accountability. One from three last week. Yeah, not great. Not great. Uh, had one winner at Albion Park. Sky Manelli backed off the map one, uh, and then two losers in Hobart. Seattle was a bit of a tough watch. Tough watch, run second, probably about $3.54. Uh, $3. Um, missed out by a nose, one more stride wins, but it is what it is. Take a bit of a knock to the POT and the SR strike rate, but uh, that's all right. We'll whip in to this week's tips. I've got three yep. to a dip switch. Bit unfamiliar territory for myself, mm. normally at Albion Park, obviously with the cup. Um, heats on Thursday night and one at Hobart. So Ipswich, race three, number one, tag of Vailoa. Uh, not going as bad as the form guide suggests. Been waiting for him to draw low over this distance. I've got a few question marks around some of the other runners in this race that are in the market. Sky Manelli in particular, she's about $2.50, winner last week for us, but drops in distance. Ipswich for the first time, wide box, full field, all against. I think tag of Vailoa at $7 represents terrific value. Race eight, number three, Sanvi, uh, one of the seven Ipswich Cup heats. Uh, she is getting back to Ipswich now. She's won five of her nine starts here with a further three placings, PB of 30 dead, which is flying. I think she'll get a lovely run behind the speed um, set by delivery, male and magistrate. Let's head down to Hobart now. Race 10, number five, Stardust Lad uh, returns to his preferred track and trip. I thought he was outstanding last week behind a dog by the name of Mr. Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. who's just winning everything right, down, uh, right now down in Tasmania. Uh, and he's only one of two dogs in this race to actually won, uh, to have won over this track and trip. So I think it's going to be extremely hard to hold out. So those are my three tips to follow on Thursday night. Very good. All right, we need to keep rolling. And we're now going to go and look at the final of the Cranbourne Cup. And it was the Bales who were fighting it out. And we are looking for Vincent Bale from the five. Here we go. Yes. Well, they all jumped in an even line, but it's the zone. Kingsley Bale just scraping <laughs> paint like every good dog does. And used box one to his advantage. Found the front. Bit of a jam up in behind Morton for Jason Sharp. Gets in the second position. I thought he'd run Kingsley Bale down, but he just knocks up on his run late. But yellow rug here, Vincent Bale. Gets underneath Morton, turning for home, gets the outside of Kingsley Bale and puts him away. What a win, didn't it? Look at this. Very <laughs> good win. <laughs> I'm not sure if he was making those noises during running RI. I think he was more focused on the, the Rennie Matua. But uh, it was a great win from Vincent Bale. He's been a, a really tenacious chaser for a long time. And it was good to see him finally take out a big race. I thought going into that race, we needed a tenacious chaser. I chose Smooth Plane, who we just see there lobbing into <laughs> second last. Yeah. Um, but Vincent Bale, I guess, was the other one that could sit off him and, and run on, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, 29.43 is a, a pretty sharp run considering the circumstances, and he's definitely put his hand up for a slot in the Top Gun sprint we'll the following about, Saturday. Talk about Top Gun a little bit later. Let's talk about the biggest story in Greyhound Racing this week, the 10-year-old Shaky Draggy, Shaky Jakey Wentworth Park track record. It's gone. <laughs> Shake Jake. <laughs> but the record that I thought no one would ever break, let alone no. a, a dog at its third start. Let's watch it. Dal Winnie looking for the checks. Bounces beautifully. Take it away, JC. Kicks up, leads. 5.43 to the first post. And you're about to see him going to overdrive down the back straight. 17.64 to the second mark. Roared away late in the piece. Run home in 11.39, which is absolutely unheard of. Takes a track record. 29.03. Beats it by four one hundredths of a second. Uh, I will admit the track is obviously on fire. Uh, I don't want to... Uh, poor cold water, obviously, on such a terrific achievement. But we have seen three of the past, well, three of the four fastest runs ever at Wentworth Park yeah. drop in the last fortnight. What, what could that be? You like tracks, obviously playing myself. tracks, obviously playing hot. I'm not going to get too much into details there because I don't really understand it. Just yeah. being a form student, I'm not sure how that works out. But we saw Bezeki run 29-12, explicit mm. missing the kick running 29-19, and obviously Dal Winnie there. Uh, he ran 29-03. That's three of the 
the last uh, four fastest runs at Wentworth Park, Could all lobbing in the last, lobbing weeks, the last yeah. fortnight. So yeah. obviously a track's playing fast, but he's definitely a dog um, to follow through the grades, obviously. It's going to be a short price for the rest of his career. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a, a big offer. Maybe it's already gone through, floating yeah. around for him. Um, but yeah, it's just a very exciting greyhound moving forward. And with a run home like that, you just don't know how far he could get distance-wise. That's, that's the run home of a dog that should easily run 600 and potentially 700 in time. It's just very exciting um, for a dog to be so complete so mm. early in their, in their career. career. Yeah, brilliant. All right, moving on to the Ipswich Cup, the next group one on the horizon. $150,000 race. There's big news. Jay is Jay. He's back. He's back. Thought to be our uh, Queensland's greatest male sprinter ever. Obviously, that photo there is him winning the million dollar chase in 2023. We were a part of that. We were watching live. He beat some big names on that occasion, Postman Pat. And uh, yeah, per the Greyhound Recorder article that dropped early in the week, he's just been happy and healthy, free galloping. Uh, all of a sudden, they've decided to throw him back into the tr uh, trial scene, Team Zamet. He's trialed absolutely phenomenal at Albion mm -hmm. Park. And they've said, why not have a crack at Group One glory once again for Jay's J at Ipswich this Thursday night. So it's great to yeah, see him back. Yeah, they thought that he'd lost interest in racing, but it seems like he hasn't. And he's just need a little bit of a fresh up in the paddock, like all of us. I'm sure you're the first person that's got to take that coming into the, the Christmas holidays, um, and then wait to see RI's content 2024. I can't wait to see it. Ooh, very, very true. Very or, true. Already thinking about that. <laughs> yes. So we the seven heats. We're only going to look at four of them. We've already looked at San V, obviously in uh, heat an four. official, an official. That's right. An official. Let's look at Heat One. There is Jay's J. Jay. <laughs> In box eight, he is the dollar twenty-five favourite. Uh, the thing with Jay is Jay, he has never raced at Ipswich. Uh, per that Greyhound Recorder article, he's trialled there as, as a youngster, but that would have been two years ago. So it's a pretty big ask considering uh, he's coming uh, off a four-month retirement. Uh, he's drawn the car park, never seen Ipswich um, under race conditions. So I have landed in the corner of Kia Kaha. Uh, she is absolutely humming this bit. She's race fit. She should lead this race on her ear. She'll make her own luck. And she's definitely a dog you should tune in and watch on Thursday night. You just watch her get down low in the boxes and just pounce. She's one of the greatest beginners you'll see, especially up in Queensland. So I think Kia Kaha can get the W over Jay's J, but obviously great to see him back and hopefully gets around safely and we see him in the final the following week. Let's move to heat two. There it is, smaller field. Yeah, plenty of speed in this field despite it being a little bit smaller. You've got Tarawai Lee there in box two. Stormy Day, the Victorian for Jason Sharp. We saw him take out a, a huge feature race earlier this year. He's first up from a bit of a break. He's the market mover on Ladbrokes. He has plenty of speed on his night and he's going to be nice and fresh for this race and super scrub for Travis Elson. Uh, dog that's a consistent pinger at Albion Park. All natural in this race. A uh, bit of bad news for Team Zamet this week. Was scratched and has been officially retired. Ooh. Unsure if we get to see him yeah. uh, come back in months Ironic, time. isn't it? Because it's Jay's Jay's brother. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And he was somewhat overshadowed by Jay's Jay throughout his career, but he had a terrific career. 47 starts, 23 wins, elite times across all tracks and trips. Won over $300,000 in prize money. MDC finalist. Uh, just an elite – or Golden East Street finalist, sorry. Uh, just an elite greyhound and a great career and one I truly love to watch go around. But um, he's not here, unfortunately. So I have landed on number six, Autumn Storm. I think she's drawn to get a lovely cart into this race. As I mentioned, two speedy dogs drawn boxes four and five. I think she's going to be stronger than them in the back half of the race. As long as she can get through that first corner unscathed, you should see her storm over the top, like her name suggests, and win heat two. Moving to heat three. Yes, yeah, Stuffman, box one, market mover here, being absolutely backed off the map, and I can see why. He's a dog where I think he jumps a lot cleaner at Ipswich rather than Albion Park, so it's good to see him um, return to Ipswich through that derby series last week, and obviously going to be extremely hard to hold out this week in a heat and into the final. Uh, other speed in the race, you've got Speed Zone and Boot and Booty, a bit like Kia Kaha early, Boot and Booty, uh, one of the better lid pingers in Queensland who's definitely going to put herself in the picture nice and early. Uh, Sage Chenille, a bit of a surprise entry into this race. The WA, um, I guess, sprinter stayer, more of a stayer later in her career. Uh, unsure this is her best distance. She's 11 days in between runs, last run being at Mantra. Potentially trialled in the week leading up to this race, but I don't think she should be a $9 chance, probably a lot longer in betting. I think she will um, start well into double figures. Duffman, for me, uh, obviously, is a short-priced, but... He's flying, loves Ipswich. He's got to get a, a lovely run probably behind Boot and Booty and he's got to be too strong late in the piece. 
Okay, very good. And we're going to move to the last heat that we're going to look at, which is heat five. There it is. Yes, well, heat four, we had an official. Just loved this uh, morning. Woke up, Dogs in the Den group chat. An official in um, brackets. Never get to get my little red stamp like the Saturday <laughs> set show, but it is what it is. Uh, speed in this race, smooth plane, uh, can kick up and sit prominently from box one, the Victorian dog that was last seen in that Cranbourne Cup. Danger zone up from the 400 metres for Travis Elson. Uh, I want it to be a little bit against smooth plane here. However, um, I haven't been able to find something to beat him just purely because he's unseen uh, at Ipswich, he's obviously a week between runs from a, a race in Victoria. Could race potentially flat, but there's just nothing in this race that I can see beating him. Trooper Tears is racing well enough at Albion Park, but could potentially uh, spot smooth playing a start. And him himself hasn't actually seen Ipswich under race conditions too. So when you do that, you got the class. You just have to go smooth playing here, dollar sixty-five. Expecting him to drift though, you might get closer to evens, um, close to jump. All right. Other notable mentions, Heat 6, we've got Hello Mike uh, for Trav Elson returning from an eight-month layoff. A uh, dog that we saw uh, go through the gold bullion. I think he's a Group 1 winner in the past. A bit like Jay is Jay coming off a, a really long layoff later in his career around that four-year age uh, mark. Cannon Stark, the WA visitor for Stevie Withers. Uh, last couple of runs were in South Australia, so he's got to be short in betting. And then Heat 7, you've got Bears Bullet for Trav Elson once again and Cluster, the brother of Jay is Jay, all natural uh, for the team. Uh, Selena Zamet Kennel. So those are seven of the best at Ipswich. Seven of them go through and the fastest second. So I can't wait to watch those heats on Thursday night. Very good. All right. Well, that brings us pretty close to wrapping up. And especially after we get through Ipswich, then all our attention will go down to Victoria, won't we? So Feel Saturday. Like Sharon, south of the border. That's right. Sat Saturday week, we've got the Top Gun. So the fastest sprinters and fastest stayers in the land go down to Victoria, where it's an invite system um and we'll, all the we'll trusty make, heads get around do we, a do we know where we know those fields early next week probably early next week maybe later yeah. this week all the trusty heads down in grv will get involved in a little boardroom and put the little ideas forward pick the eight fastest um sprinters and stayers across the land as ri mentioned and it's mm. up to the trainers whether they're willing to take the big golden carrot which i'm sure they are of course why wouldn't you it's a it's a group uh, race for uh, a lot of money, six figures. Yeah, but it's no, it's a great carnival. The Dream Chasers Carnival is obviously the Melbourne Cup. You've got the Phoenix at the end of it. So we will be all over it. And with that out of the way, I hope you enjoy Derby Racing, Derby Day Racing this weekend, Melbourne Cup next week, JC's Tips, all the Action Ipswich Cup. It's all on, plenty to do. Up the Dan, cheers. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.